Hello everyone, don't mind me sounding a little different. I record this just after taking an afternoon nap. Usually I record these things in the morning, but here we are. So you've probably read it in the title or seen it in the thumbnail. Today I'm going to talk about the maybe ever so slightly diminishing creativity that is going on in the art industry. Now the example that I'm going to give you is probably not the best, but it's the one I recently have seen the most of while studying them. I'm talking about no one else than League of Legends and their splash arts. And while they are regarded as one of the most prevalent and best artworks out there in the industry, one could almost argue that they have hit the roof with their creativity. Now, for the people that don't really know what these splash arts are all about, I'm gonna have a little summary here. If you want it, you can listen to it, and if you don't, you can skip ahead. Now, here it goes. A League of Legends splash art is, most of the time, a very well-rendered version of an in-game character or asset that is made over the course of about one to three months usually, and there are around 50 people working on it. With that number, I don't mean there are 50 artists drawing on them, but I mean that there are 50 people knowing about it, about the production, and having some kind of say in what will be in the final image. Now, most of the time, these splash arts contain a character, and in about 36% of the time, this character is a some kind of humanoid female, which is exactly the group that we will be looking at today. To be more specific, we will look at the posing of those characters. And just to prove my point, I will go to a random champion generator and select female champions. Once I have a selection of, let's say, 10 female champions, I will go to a random number generator and generate a number, which will be the skin for the champion, which is, which is basically a variation of the original champion splash art with its own pose and its own theme. Now, if I have correctly done all that, we should have 10 different kinds of champion splash arts on the screen now. And since I'm recording this voice line pre-production, so I don't even know what kind of champions and what kind of splash arts there will be, I have no way of knowing what I will be showing you. However, through my prior research, and even though I have no way of knowing what kind of pictures you're seeing right now, I would suggest that at least three of these 10 pictures have something in common regarding posing. Now I'll let you have some time to think about what I said and maybe find out yourself what those have in common. Now it's a little bit tricky since I don't see the pictures right now and I have to basically prejudge whatever the hell is on the screen, but nonetheless I will just say snap and now all those that have nothing in common will be gone and all those that are still here have basically the same kind of upper body pose. Maybe the angle is a little bit different, maybe the lighting is a little bit different. However, the upper body posing, well, except for the arms maybe, is the same. The thing I'm talking about is when you have a human female shot in a low angle, maybe a three quarter view. so. Her chest is obscuring one of her shoulders. That is the kind of posing that I am talking about. Now, since the possibility is there that almost none of the 10 pictures that I randomly selected will have this pose, I will just show you some examples of what I mean. And while you are looking at these examples, why don't we ask ourselves, why is that? Why? Does a million or, I don't know, billion dollar company with some of the best artists and art leads and whatever always come back to this pose? That is the million dollar question. And the million dollar answer is quite simple. They always tend to come back to this kind of posing because it just works. But what is it that just works? And let me tell you, everything it is that just works. Let me break it down for you a little. And let's just take this splash art. It's called Snow Moon Morgana, I think. And for one, the first thing that we notice is the pose 
works because we can immediately see it is a human. Sounds pretty simple, but it's not always that easy, right? If you have a human stretched in a pose in what kind of perspective, then the first read of this kind of painting is going to be quite hard. So we read it as a human. And not just that, we read it as a female. Furthermore, the three-quarter view shows us a lot of her body and with that a lot of what clothes she has, which is basically the selling point of these skins and splash arts. Then additionally, these are two points, because for one demographic, this kind of posing is quite flattering for her female form. And for the other demographic, this kind of posing is also empowering since we are looking at her from a lower angle, having her front facing a little bit away from us but still showing also tells us how this character looks and it allows for the character to directly look at the viewer. Now getting a little into design theory, this kind of posing also lets you do something that is often done when you design stuff. It has something to do with making one side of your design quite spiky, quite detailed in the silhouette, and the other very smooth and easy to read. I'm not entirely sure how the principle is called, however, it works, and we know that it works. You can see it every now and then. If you keep your peepers open, you will see it probably tomorrow. Now last but not least, this kind of posing, well, it's just easier to do. Imagine churning out the most fucked up pose in whatever kind of perspective and being blatantly beaten in a contest of how prevalent a painting goes to a viewer by this. Now, I don't want to say this is bad, because it is absolutely not, but it shows how simple we really are as humans. All it takes is one simple pose and bam, neuron activation, so to say. Now, to answer the question that is probably on the thumbnail, or maybe the title, are they really running out of ideas? The answer is no, probably not. But what they are doing is optimizing their art for maximum impact. And that is something that's not reserved for them. That's something we can do. I can do it and you can do it. So the next time you're painting a character, maybe a female humanoid that is in dire need of posing, think about once or twice on what you've learned today and get your art to a new level. With that said, happy drawing. I don't think this is the first video that I am actually talking in the new year, but if it is, then happy new year. Goodbye.